Italian movies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woody Allen loved her. <laughs> and there were, yes, she was very interesting. So this is really, really, I think it's really funny. Woody Allen, not really good. I think they were.
Polish composers besides the famous guy everybody knows, but let's say it out loud for those who are not necessarily musicians, Chopin. And by the way, as I uh, pronounce certain names today, I would like to be corrected. In the same way, you know, being a native Russian speaker, I try to correctly pronounce the Russian composers whenever I present uh, performance of classic Russian music. I would very much like to pre uh, properly pronounce any Polish composer I might play. So please do speak up and just say, no, you, you should put the stress here. Or, just, I was, or you can see me afterwards, I don't mind. <laughs> um, so uh, yes, indeed, Ch Chopin. And um, of course, that's probably how he, he is known, because he lived in France for so long. And um, um, I knew other names, and maybe even some of you know those names too. Uh, truth, of course, is that in 25 minutes or, or so of music, I cannot possibly cover the entire breadth of uh, Polish, uh, well, specifically, I wouldn't say classical music in this case. Um, but I tried to select things that were meaningful to me. And so the first piece, um, I will start with, is probably um, one of the pieces that many, certainly Russian kids uh, who grow up uh, listening to maybe their parents or grandparents playing a piano here, but you know, perhaps um, Polish kids. I, I, I'm, I'm sure that uh, it, it's a famous piece in most parts of the world. And I'm talking about um, a polonaise written by this fellow right here. Um, I, I, you can recognize this diplomat, politician, and at some point an, an army leader. Uh, so he wrote a kind of like another um, Russian diplomat by the name of Grybo Yedov, who mostly did not compose music, but uh, left a few beautiful waltzes for us. So he wrote a fa famous Polonaise called Farewell to the Fatherland. And uh, it was written in 1794, before Beethoven became famous. Um, and it's considered one of the first examples of uh, romantic music for piano. So what I will do is I'll play it for you, and you know, I don't know if you can all see <laughs> the pictures that I, I show here, so maybe for some of you you can put a face to the music. And um, you know, uh, some of it is his and some of it is perhaps my little rearrange. <laughs>
statistics gathering. How many of you know this tune from before? <laughs> so, I was correct that, you know, it's a pretty, pretty well known tune. So, of course, now we get a little bit later in life, um, um, you know, to the specific life that was covered by Friedrich Chopin. And uh, is that correct? Anybody will volunteers to pronounce it in Polish? Frederick uh, Chopin. Oh. Not too far, but uh, a little bit too much of the Russian ones. <laughs> so um, he, he, he lived during the years of 1810 until 1849. Not a very long life. He was sickly, he died young. Uh, but he created a lot. And I'll try to give you a sample of uh, his various periods, shall we say. So this is a drawing of him when he was quite a young man, maybe in his teens. Um, that's the actual photograph from 1849, the year he died. So, oops, he's only 39, but oops. He could take a rest. Um, and this is a beautiful uh, photograph written by a fiancé of one time in 1835. So he's only 25 years old here. Um, I forgot her name, Maria... No, not that one. What is this guy thing? I, I'm the wrong name. What's it? Thank you. Thank you. So, so I'm extremely bad with names, especially of people I just read about on the internet a few hours ago. <laughs> but but she, she actually drew this picture, and I thought it would be nice to show it to you. So, anyway, some Chopin. Um, and, oh, Chopin. 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 So, first, Chopin. 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 Thank you. And then we'll move on into something a little more modern. By the way, this last piece that I'll play in this set, it's a mazurka, uh, Op. 68 in F minor. For a really long time, it was um, presented as the very last work he wrote. More recent musicological research shows it is not. Three years before, there's another mazurka which is actually supposed to be the last. So uh, I'll play it as the last of the set, but uh, don't think in a too sentimental way about it. <laughs> <laughs>
understand also why I needed that uh, breather between the revolutionary study and this, and this study. Um, 